Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over how to use DaVinci Eye on an iPad. I know most of the instructional videos show an iPhone, but it's essentially the same exact setup. So the first thing we're gonna do is you can either draw one of the inspiration pictures or you can press the draw button in the top right corner of the screen. Next, we're gonna select a picture that we wanna draw. Um, these are gonna be some of the upcoming inspiration pictures. I think we're gonna do this guy. He seems kinda of cool. All these photos that I get, that I'm drawing, I'm getting from Unsplash. It's a pretty great website if you wanna find inspiration drawings. So I chose classic mode just now. Uh, you could choose AR mode, but I'm going to be using classic mode, which is available on both iOS and Android. So the first thing you need to do is place your iPad on top of uh, a tall surface of any kind. What I've done here is I've taken a can of Lysol or any kind of spray can and I've placed some blue painter's tape on the top of it just to kind of make it sticky so that way it stays put. You can also use something like a glass or you can use a handy dandy iPad stand that you can get on Amazon for relatively cheap. I think this one goes for under $24 or $25. We're going to be having a link to these in the app at some point once we get them in. But for now, we're gonna use a regular household item to draw with the iPad. So first things first is we're going to place the iPad on top of the can. The way that I'm doing this is it goes right in the middle so that way it stays balanced. You do not have to have the iPad off to the side like this. You can have the iPad like this you can have the iPad like this, or you could even have the iPad like this, whatever is easiest for you to draw. Now that I'm gonna get this set up, I'm going to zoom out the screen. So here you can see we have the paper. Now you have this small little rectangle that's in the middle of your screen, and that's your camera's view. So your camera is right here on the iPad. And what this is showing you is everything that your camera can see. So your camera can see to right about here and right about here. So that doesn't seem like it's very big. Um, so there's ways to expand the view of your camera, but we're going to get into that later. Let's see, I'm gonna start out, I'd like his head to be right about here and I'd like to be the end of his hands probably right about here on the paper. So I'm going to find my marking on the paper so this is the top of his head, that's where I want it to go. And here's the bottom of where his hands and where I want those to go. So I'm going to hit move again, and I'm going to pull my fingers apart to make it so that his hands, bottom of his hands and the top of his head fit directly in between my two marks. So you can see my mark right here and you can see my mark right here. Now I'm going to press move again. And when I press move again, the image that I'm drawing is locked on my paper. So I'm just gonna show you the difference because sometimes that can get confusing. So when I press move, the image is the only thing that moves. And when I press move again, when it's unselected, when it's not orange, the camera and the image are locked together. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that when we're zooming in and out like this, that the image stays in proportion with the camera. And here, it's not really zooming in and out the camera. What it's doing is it's magnifying and demagnifying your camera's view. And using this method, you can draw fine details. Now, we're gonna do this quick sketch and then I'm gonna show you how to make it larger. To start sketching, you're just going to look at the iPad and I can see where my pencil is and I can see where I wanna draw by looking at the screen. Now, some people get confused and they think that the app physically projects onto the paper. You have to look through the screen of the iPad to see it on the paper. So again, I'm just tracing my outlines here and this is gonna be a quick sketch because I wanna show you how to make larger drawings right after this. One thing that I wanna point out, you'll see as I'm drawing that it's going in and out. The focus is moving in and out. So it wants to focus on the pencil and sometimes it wants to focus on the paper or wants to focus on my hand. 
So this is important. Before you start drawing, you want to go to Tools, Camera, and then Focus Lock. This little slider will lock the focus wherever you set it. So that means that the autofocus will stop moving in and out and stop annoying you. So the focus looks great right about there. And now it won't zoom in and out or you know, float in and out with the autofocus. So that is an important thing. One cool thing we can do is we can zoom in now and we can draw fine details as long as the move button is not pressed. As you're drawing, you can change the opacity by pressing the opacity button and then moving the opacity slider. So that way you can see where you've drawn and where you have it. An advanced way to do this is to press tools and then press strobe and the opacity pull strobe on and off. This is helpful so that way you can see where you've drawn and where you haven't and you can also compare your shading to see what needs to be lighter and what needs to be darker. When you're using the strobe tool, make sure that your opacity is set almost all the way to the max. I'm gonna turn off the strobe tool for now. Another cool thing that you should try when you're drawing is recording while you draw. You can press the record button all the way over here and then press record, turn it on, and do start recording. This will create an amazingly cool time lapse of your drawing without the screen overlay. Now, if I hit stop recording right here, this little red dot, I will get a screen that shows me my time lapse, and I can export it by pressing the export button. These videos will be saved to your camera roll. One last thing that I want to mention about this, which is one of the biggest questions that we get is if I move my glass or if I, you know, I accidentally, you know, knock this or, or move this over, how do I get it back in place? Well, it's pretty easy. All you do is you put it back to where you had it. And as you can see now, my drawing is completely off. Oh no. Well, it's really simple. All you have to do is take your glass, don't try and, and adjust anything on the iPad itself, just move your cup that your iPad is on and you should be able to align the image almost perfectly back to where it was. Now I'm just using key points of places where I've already drawn here to do this. So I'm looking at right here, okay, right here is perfectly lined up, okay, the sides of the face are pretty perfectly lined up. The top of the hair is where I was drawing that. It's perfectly lined up. So, I mean, it looks pretty good to me. And there we go. It's lined up exactly the way it was. That took a whole, like, five seconds. Okay, so now you're wondering, well, this is all great. I can draw a drawing about this size on my paper, but how, if I want to make it the size of the entire paper, or if I wanted to make it the size of this larger paper, well, how do I do that? It's pretty easy. We're gonna do the same thing. We're going to place the iPad on the paper. I'm gonna say that I want the top of his head to be about right here, and I'd like his hands to be right about here. So this time, I'm going to move the iPad and I'm going to enlarge this image. So, like I said, this is the camera's view. This is the only thing that the camera can see, and the camera can only see to about here, which causes a problem for us because we want to be able to draw in this space. So, for example, if I blow this up and I want to be able to draw this gentleman's hands, how would I do that? You know, I'm going to draw this face really big so you guys can see exactly what I mean. and you can see where the lips are right here, is that some of it is outside of where the camera's view is. And this causes a problem for me because I wanna be able to draw right here, but I can't do it because I can't see it. So 
I'm just going to continue drawing this area. And now to draw the rest, this is the move. We're going to move the cup down. So we want to move it to where we want to draw next. So I want to draw the bottom part of the paper, so I'm moving it there. So I'm going to turn down the opacity so you can see that better on the screen. So if I was drawing up here, I just move it down just like that. Now I can see the area where I couldn't before. I'm going to turn the opacity back up. And now we're going to press the move button. And I'm going to move the picture using one finger, the reference image back and align it, just loosely align it with where it should be. So I see the lips are right there. So I'm going to align the lips back right there. And the nostrils are right there. And now, it's imperfect. You could see that it's a little bit off. You can see the glasses are a little too far to the left. The nostrils are a little bit too far to the left. So what I'm going to do now is just like before, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to use my hand to move the can that the iPad is resting on to realign it back to where it was. So right now I'm looking here and I'm trying to align right where the glasses were. And now I'm looking here at the nostrils and trying to align where the nostrils were. And see, I'm just slightly nudging it, slightly moving it. Now I'm looking at here where the lips are, just slightly adjusting. And there we go. I mean, that looks pretty good to me gonna keep just a little bit more and there we go I think we got it also when you do this um, it's best to have your paper taped down so it doesn't move around on you now we'll just continue our drawing One thing to note, always make sure that you press the move button again after you've finished placing it. Because if you don't, you don't want to accidentally zoom in and zoom out. A good suggestion that I got from somebody was to uh, make a, a move lock kind of feature. And that's something we're going to be incorporating in the app in the future. Keep an eye out for that. There you go. That is how you draw. Quick setup tutorial, just answering a few questions from some feedback that I've gotten about how to use the app on an iPad versus how to use it on an iPhone. So I hope you enjoy that. If you have any questions whatsoever about using an iPad, using DaVinci Eye, any questions on stands, please feel free to reach out. Uh, my email is info at davinciiapp.com. Never stop creating, guys.